Hello my dear friends welcome to this course on communication engineering and today we will going to learn about angle modulation angle modulation it's a very important topic of communication engineering it is the base of the communication because uh, you will know by the time we study this topic you will know that what exactly this angle modulation is helpful for us it's one of the greatest topics one of the greatest discoveries of communication engineering okay so let's start this topic with a basic discussion of Uh, i am assuming that you have understood the amplitude modulation you know what is amplitude modulation so i am directly jumping to the angle modulation and we'll get a quick review of angle modulation amplitude modulation as well okay so the first thing that we have to discuss is that what is the angle modulation versus amplitude modulation now my task here is to show a comparison because if we have a proper comparison then we would be able to understand the derivations more properly the concept of the angle modulation more properly okay so let's see that angle modulation and amplitude modulation see one of the thing you know that modulation means shifting and this shifting is used for transmitting message signals over a long distances using a carrier wave so that carrier wave can be modified can be modulated either uh, by the amplitude or either by the angle okay so let's first understand that what is this angle how we are going to modify this angle how we are going to modulate this angle so let us suppose ac cos 2 pi fct plus phi 0 is a sinusoidal signal okay let us suppose i am taking this as a sinusoidal signal now generally what we take is this uh, this signal as st we represent the signal as st this is generally our carrier wave okay this is our carrier wave which is going to carry our message signal or the base band signal generally we call it okay in this carrier wave we have ac as our amplitude of this carrier wave okay we have fc as the frequency of carrier wave okay and phi 0 represents the initial phase of the angle okay initial phase angle of this carrier wave okay let us suppose mt is a message signal or a base band signal okay we generally call it uh, i will use them interchangeably the base band signal and the message signal so mt is my best base band signal now in the amplitude modulation we have learned that if this amplitude of the carrier wave if this amplitude amplitude of the carrier wave is a function of message signal okay that is if amplitude is a function of message signal i will say that this is the amplitude modulation this is a condition for amplitude modulation okay i will say that amplitude of carrier wave or i will write it as amplitude of st is a function of is basically a function of mt okay in that case we call this condition as amplitude modulated wave or we know this technique of modulation as amplitude modulation okay but just focus just observe this condition that we have st as ac cos 2 pi fct plus phi 0 here i have three parameters one is this amplitude second is this frequency and this phi is basically the phase the initial phase here what i have done is in the case of amplitude modulation we have modified the one of the parameters of this signal of this carrier signal but if we modify some other things in this carrier signal as well now what are the other things as the name suggests it is the angle modulation so i am going to modify the angle okay here we are going to modify the angle of this carrier wave okay so let me write here in angle modulation in angle modulation we're going to modify we modify or we modulate angle of st <coughs> st is our carrier signal now in this carrier signal can you see the angle angle is 2 pi fct plus phi 0 now since this is a function of time this particular thing is a function of time i can write that theta t is equals to 2 pi fct now theta t is like the angle of this carrier wave so this st can be interchangeably written as st is equals to ac cos theta t okay theta t is basically the angle of this wave <clears throat> so now my task here is to write this angle as a wave it's because i'm going to modify this theta i'm going to modify this theta with respect to the base band signal so so, to, so that to get the angle modulated wave okay now observe this condition if i see that this theta t 
if this theta t is basically a function of mt or the message signal or the baseband signal we call this condition as the angle modulation or the angle modulated wave now in the angle modulation we have two things one is the frequency modulation it means where we are going to modify the frequency of this wave and in the second case we have the phase modulation where we are going to directly modify the phase of this particular angle okay so in both the cases are of the angle modulation because ultimately the angle is dependent on frequency angle is dependent on this phase so definitely we have we're going to have two conditions we have two parameters so we'll try to modify each of the parameters separately and understand that what exactly the conditions what exactly the mathematics is involved behind it and then we will learn how the frequency modulated wave and phase modulated wave are generated and what are the procedures and there are various other techniques okay now one question come to our mind that if we have the condition of amplitude modulation it is so successfully installed so uh, practically used amplitude modulation then why we are going for the frequency modulation or phase modulation okay why this condition we are going to do this because as you can see this mathematically it's difficult very very difficult or even practically it is very difficult to produce the frequency modulated wave the circuits involved are not easy same with the phase modulated but the amplitude modulation it it would be an easy task but still we are um, diverting towards frequency and phase modulation so let's see that why basically i am using angle modulation or why basically frequency and amp phase modulated wave so there are various pros various pros of angle modulation the very first importance is that it is more immune to the channel noise as we know that amplitude modulated wave is basically very very prone to the channel noise uh, a, a lot of channel noise can totally distort the signal it, it can totally wipe out the van the signal can vanish totally so that's why our task is to produce a wave to produce a technique such that the message can be transmitted over a long distance with less noise with less channel noise okay so it's more immune to channel noise so angle modulated wave is more immune to channel noise that's a very very important uh, aspect of this and this type of technique the second thing is it is more immune to non linear distortion see if the distortion is linear that it is uh, i'm saying about linear distortion means the distortion over the amplitude is linear it's exactly same for a low amplitude as well as high amplitude okay means the proportional but in case if the distortion is not proportional it would be very very difficult for us to draw or it is very very difficult for us to extract the message signal out of a non linear distorted signal okay non linearly distorted signal so that's why the angle modulated wave is basically more immune to the non linear distortion hence it's a very very good technique the third thing is amplitude fading do not create any problem as you know that in amplitude modulation everything everything is every information every bit of information is stored in the amplitude of the carrier wave so if there is a distortion in the amplitude it will create problem for us to rectify the problems rectify the amplitude or the, rectify the attenuation that is faced by this carrier wave and uh, to draw the information so that kind of problem is not there in angle modulation because even the amplitude fades that will not going to create an issue because our information is stored in either the phase or in the frequency of the angle modulated wave now there are some cons also related to this because everything comes with an advantage as, as well as a disadvantage so same thing happens with the angle modulated wave as well so the biggest disadvantage that we are facing with this angle modulation is only one that is a very very important disadvantage now i will not call it as 100% disadvantage it depends on the demand and supply so the disadvantage is that the bandwidth required is very very high when we go for an angle modulate uh, amplitude modulated wave if the let us suppose for amplitude modulation we require a bandwidth of w so in case of frequency modulation or phase modulation if i say we will going to require a bandwidth of 2w okay almost twice of the bandwidth required for the amplitude modulation so this is the biggest problem that we are facing with the fm and pm signal but although that does not uh, create any issue because uh, as you know the spectrum is totally divided it's divided by the government and spectrum uh, has a specific part of it uh, dedicated for a particular kind of services okay so that's why we'll say that 
angle modulation is overall if i say angle modulation is better than amplitude modulation for proper information convey okay for proper information communication okay okay so let's move further now as i told you that angle modulation has two things that is one is frequency modulation and phase modulation so we'll separately understand each of this so let's first understand the phase modulation if i talk about phase modulation now what is the phase modulation you know that theta t as i said theta t it is basically equals to 2 pi fc t plus phi 0 okay now this is the phase as i told you in case of angle modulation our task is to make this theta t a function of message signal like this a message a function of message signal a function of baseband signal so how would we incorporate this mt inside this theta t see our task is to transfer the information to pass on the information using this phase modulation condition so how we are going to do this is we will take this theta or we take this angle okay this is known as the instantaneous angle we call this as instantaneous instantaneous okay sorry for the spelling instantaneous angle okay i am talking about instantaneous angle so theta i t this is 2 pi fc plus now i added this condition kp times mt now kp times mt is the part which is the message signal or the baseband signal this is basically the baseband signal so what is this 2 pi fc t 2 pi fc here fc is basically the frequency of the carrier wave okay the initial frequency of the carrier wave i'm talking about but here what i'm doing is i am adding a term kp times mt now this kp times mt terms represent the baseband signal okay this is incorporated in this angle so as we get a phase modulated wave or we can modify the angle now you can see when this mt gets changes this theta it will automatically get changed okay the angle at any instance it will automatically get changed with respect to time okay now what is this kp stands for this kp this c as i told you 2 pi fc okay now if i say kp now kp is basically the phase sensitivity this is the constant okay this is a constant we say this kp as a phase sensitivity because we are doing the phase modulation so we defined a term that is kp which is as phase sensitivity this is a constant that we have defined okay now what can be the unit of this kp if i ask you you can see that kp times mt this complete kp times mt has to be in the radians okay this kp times mt has to be in the radians and if i say the unit of mt so unit of message signal is in volts okay because the signal is transmitted and the amplitude of the signal is calculated in volts so this mt is basically in volts so this kp times mt being in radians and mt in volts i can clearly see that the unit of kp would be radians per volt okay the radians per volt would be the unit of kp so this is how we can define the kp or the phase sensitivity this is the term phase sensitivity that we have defined now more this kp more the sensitivity and more this phase would be sensitive towards the change in message signal okay it means what i mean to say is if kp is high a small change in message signal will create a phase change in actual modulated wave okay or in the carrier wave so that's what we are saying that kp is basically the phase sensitivity is relating this message signal to the phase okay or message signal to the carrier wave or to the phase of the carrier wave okay now moving further let us suppose this phi zero or the initial angle it is zero initial phase angle it is zero let us assume this because uh, it's not uh, that much important for us because ultimately we are the one who is going to pro create the carrier wave so we can take the initial angle as zero for the carrier wave because we are producing it ourselves okay it is not a resultant of something it is like we are producing it and it is getting mixed with the message signal as in the phase modulation so that to get a phase modulated wave okay so this phi zero is basically zero now if i write this st signal as i told you theta is basically 2 pi fc plus 2 pi fc t plus kp times mt plus phi zero so i can write this condition i can write this condition inside my message signal and my message signal will become st is equals to ac cos 2 pi fc t plus kp times mt it means i have incorporated this message signal inside this phase of 
और इनसाइड द एंगल ऑफ द 